Hi, I'm Matt Pinjot, and with me now is singer-songwriter Fiona Apple, who has a debut record out called Title. Fiona, it's good to have you here. Thank you. We talked about you coming here a long time ago, and yeah. uh, it's good to have you out. I saw you do an amazing show at the Fez in New York City. It was extremely compelling. I really enjoyed that. Did you see the last one? Is that the one that you went to? No, I went to the, the first uh, first or second one on the first night. Okay. Oh, and then you came to see me, but you didn't see the show that yeah, night. Yeah, I just came to talk to you that night. Okay. Came to talk okay, to you about good. the record and just talk to you about <laughs> performing, which was cool. Did you have fun playing those fest shows? Yeah, it's just that the last one sucked, so I just <laughs> wanted to make sure that you weren't there. No, 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 I didn't see that one. But uh, the one I saw, the one I saw was really good. Tell me about how long have you been playing piano and, and writing songs? It's insane. Um, it's different. Like with piano, I've been playing. I, I started taking lessons when I was about eight, and then um, writing songs when I was like eleven. You know. Wait, wow. um, but I used to write, like, instrumental stuff, too, before that. Yeah, were you, were you into uh, popular music, or were you, was it uh, like classical or jazz? What kind of thing were you doing? Um, I was into, like, I was into basically everything that I'm into now, which is everything. Right. You know, basically everything except for, like, country and techno. I listened to everything, you know. Right. Um, but, yeah, I was listening to, like, a lot of... At that time, I think I was listening to, like, a lot of Billie Holiday and, like, Ella Fitzgerald and... Um, I don't know. And like also like WC, you know. Yeah. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Right. You know? I mean, you're your singing and your and your songs are very soulful and, and you know very deep and deeply rooted. And you know it's obvious that I mean Billie Holiday was was that kind of artist. I mean she was really I mean bringing out her soul and Ella's you know ability to sing and the way that she sang. I know she's one of your biggest influences as well, right? Yeah. It's yeah. quite amazing. Uh, and you do it well. I mean you do do you, I mean you do your own thing well. I'm not saying you do their thing, but I mean you've kind of synthesize that into your own thing and your songwriting. Um, I want to do a, actually we're going to show a video and then we're going to come back in a little bit and we're going to talk to Fiona some more. Right now, we have a brand new video from the LA band The Descendants. They haven't put out an album since 1987. When lead singer Milo, that's right, Milo Ackerman left the band to pursue a career in biochemistry. And they're an amazing band. Of course, they became all and, you know, had a bunch of different singers and now Earlier this year, Milo reunited with The Descendants. They have a new album out called Everything Sucks. Let's check off the first clip off this. And it's the one uh, called I'm the One. It's new here in 120 minutes. It's awesome. Check it out. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield, and I'm here with Fiona Apple. Uh, let's talk a bit about Maya Angelou, who's a poet that, uh, that I know has been a big influence on you. Tell me how, uh, how you discovered, discovered Maya. Um, it's weird. My mom got me a book of, uh, like a compilation book of her poetry. Yeah. And there was just something in her writing that I just related to. It was like, um, you know, I spent like so much time being ashamed of certain things about me, being ashamed of like being a very, very sensitive person because, you know, it's not cool to be sensitive. It's cool to be like, you know, nothing gets to me, you know. And, and so I grew up just kind of feeling really ashamed of being sensitive. And when I would read everything that she wrote, not just her poetry, but like, you know, the books that she's written, um, she writes about like her sensitivities and her vulnerabilities and the weak points in her life and the embarrassing points in her life. And, you know, I remember I would like, I would read about it and it would be just, you know, it, it would it would be a, it would give me a lot of hope just to read about somebody that I admired that, you know, I respected her work and to know that she, had weaknesses, you know, that she wasn't just a totally strong person born that way, you know, born perfect like everyone else seems to be. And she, um, I remember I used to look at the book on the back of the, on the back cover, and like that woman, if you haven't seen her, it's just like, you know, you can see it like in her posture and in her eyes and in her smile that she just, you know, she knows who she is and she's proud of who she is. And to know that she had been through similar things that I've been through, you know, and that she came out that way, it was just, it was incredible hope for me, you know. Yeah, that's great. I think, you know, it's true that, uh, you know, we would definitely be attracted to people that, you know, we can relate to their vulnerabilities because we are all vulnerable, you know what I mean? And we, uh, you know, people do, like you said, pretend to be really uh, insensitive. And some people aren't sensitive, but a lot of us are sensitive, you know. And I think that's great that you found her and she was, you know, influence on you and everything. We're going to come back in a minute, by the way, uh, with Fiona. But what we're going to do right now is show you the video, which we've seen before here on 120. We're going to show it again from the album title. Here's Shadow Boxer, 120 minutes. 
From their second album, too, that's Presidents of the United States of America with Mach 5 here on 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield, and this is Fiona Apple. Now, Fiona, speaking of uh, you know sensitivities, when you perform live, you'll go on stage and you'll talk about uh, you know things that are going on in your life, things that have influenced the songs on your record, and just basically how you're feeling, which is a very open way to perform. Um, when you approach the songwriting as well, with songs like Pale September and So Like Honey, were, were those songs actually about personal experiences and things that you'd gone through lyrically? Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, a lot of them are based on a whole bunch of different things, um, but there are a, a couple of them that are based on, like, one experience or one person, you know? Like, a lot of them are just, you know, I'll be talking, it'll sound like I'm talking about one person, but it's about, you know, three guys that I knew, you know, Shadowboxers, three guys. It's not just one person, and but like Pale September is about one particular thing, one particular incident, and um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a couple of songs like that where it's just, but it's all about you know um, things that I've experienced. You know, I don't know how I could really write about anything that I didn't know about. You know, right. and I only know my own experience. So, but yeah. you've probably heard people say that you have a voice that's. Uh... This sounds like someone who's, you know, like who, they, they, sometimes they'll say, oh, it sounds like somebody is this old, older, like really, like this whole blues and soul thing. How do you react to that when people say that to you? Because, I mean, then they're referring to the idea that you're younger, um, you're young, but you have a voice that sounds like somebody's been through so much in this world. I mean, obviously, when you're younger, you can be through, have been through so much. How do you react yeah. to that? Yeah. Well, it's just, it's funny, you know, I mean, it, because a lot of people, you know, they ask me about, like, you know, some people, some guy in Europe actually told me that he thought that I had made up everything that I had written about because he didn't think that I could have experienced that much being 19. And it just makes you kind of feel like, damn, there's a big generation gap because people don't realize that, you know, I, I, I didn't even realize that there was anything like weird about what I was singing or how I was singing it, you know, if I'm 19, you know, I, I, until people started asking me about it. And I think that people just don't realize that. I'm totally normal, you know, everything yeah. that I'm writing about, most people my age, as every age, you know, feels, it's just that some people write about it and some people don't, you know? Right. And a lot of 19-year-olds don't write about it, a lot of do, and they, they're just not in the public eye, so... Exactly, so all of a sudden they act like it's something that's unique. Yeah, but you don't need, like, years to know things, you just need experiences, and you need to be, you know, if you're a sensitive person and you can, like, take in all the things that happen to you and, and learn from them, then you grow older in a different sense, a on different a different sense. level. It's know? not age, and it doesn't have to be, right. you know, exactly. That's true. Stick around, because we'll be talking with Fiona Apple, and right after the break, it's a brand new one from the Queers. Stick around. Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pinfield, and I'm here right now with Fiona Apple. And Fiona, the, you have a really great, interesting story. Some people use the word Cinderella story. I don't know if that's the correct word, but um, the story on how you got signed and made all these demo tapes and only had to end up giving out one. Why don't you yeah. tell us the stories, because it's been heard and retold, and you might get that whole Japanese whispers thing where it changes <laughs> every time it gets to somebody else. So let's hear it from you firsthand. Um, I just decided like a year and a half ago, two years ago, that I wanted to make a demo tape. I went out to California, made a tape, three songs, just me and the piano. And then um, my plan was, like, I didn't know how to, you know, get into the business. I, you know, it happened really weird, though. Um, I made these three, uh, I made these three songs on this tape. I went to New York, brought a couple of, uh, for Christmas, I went home to New York, and I brought a couple of the tapes with me, just not to give to anybody, like, this is me, hire me, you know, sign me, just like for my friends and family and stuff. My friend took one of the tapes and I had made up like a batch of 78 tapes. That was my number of tapes that I made up. I made up 78 tapes, went back to New York, and I was planning on when I went back to California, I was going to start sending them out to managers or record companies or whatever. But instead, I had brought these couple of tapes back. One of my friends took one of the tapes and took it to the woman that she babysat for, who does um, public relations. Yeah. And, um, so this woman heard the tape, apparently liked it, and she had a Christmas party to which she invited Andrew Slater, who's my producer and manager, and he went to the party, heard the tape, and then called me, and so I still have, you know, 77 tapes. I never even, like, got to 
the place where I was going to make an effort. <laughs> That's great, actually. Andrew did a great job producing the record, by the way, as well. And uh, I know he works really close with you. That's that's an interesting story. So what are you going to do with those other tapes? Are they just kind of hanging out somewhere? They're just like, I'll be in my house in California, and I'll, like, you know, open a drawer, and there'll be, like, three, and I'll look under the bed, and there'll be, like, seven. You know, they're just, like, hanging Wherever out. Wherever you can stash them, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Well, I mean, you, you really did a great first record, and, um, you know, from this point on, I guess you'll be doing a lot of touring at this point. I mean, now I know you have some time off in December, but where are you going? Where, where are things going from here? Um, I really don't know. I mean, I'm going around the states now, um, and then I'm gonna like I have some little tour to do in France, and then coming back, and I have no idea what's gonna happen like in yeah. January. Yeah. But. I just keep seeing things keep changing, so you know. Yeah. It's kind of like a whole, you know, snowball effect right now. But it's good that people are getting to hear your record, and yeah. that uh, people are, people should go out and see you live if they get the opportunity to, because it's a completely different experience as well. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it, Thank Fiona. You. It was nice to have you, and it was great to have Fiona here. You can check out her album known as Title. Up next, I'm going to show you a brand new video from the Queers, who currently have an album out called Don't Back Down, and this is not the song done by the Dead Milkman. It's their own song. In fact, this band has had songs covered by New Bomb Turks, who are their friends, and they write their own material. Here it is. It's called Punk Rock Girls, and it's new 120 minutes tonight.